Awesome. So I've lived in LA for a long time, but uh, I'm not from here. I'm from Georgia. Yes, but like everyone in this room, I moved here because I had a dream. <laughs> my dream was to get the hell away from my family. <laughs> so I've made it. Thank you. I've made it. I grew up really poor. Anybody grow up poor? Yes? Y'all just a bunch of rich motherfuckers <laughs> right here. This is a Republican section. <laughs> when I was growing up, y'all, there was seven of us in a two bedroom, one bathroom trailer. Yeah, I remember my brother went to prison. He wrote me a letter. Dear Bobby, this place is a palace. <laughs> They only got two guys to a room. <laughs> they eat three times a day. He said, I want to stay here forever. <laughs> he said, I got a plan. They tried to let me out of here. I'm going to kill somebody. <laughs> My whole family is a bunch of uh, drug addicts and alcoholics and high school dropouts. And I'm the disappointment. <laughs> I have a master's degree. I'm the disappointment of the family because I'm liberal. <laughs> yep, I'm the black sheep in a family of racist sheep. <laughs> My whole family thinks we're cursed. They're always talking about the family curse. I'm like, y'all, we're not the Kennedys. We just make really bad decisions. <laughs> Get a GED. The curse will be lifted. <laughs> My family thinks I'm uppity because I know that Ellen Salmon is silent. <laughs> They gonna call it salmon till they die. <laughs> so y'all, I had convinced myself that I am not a redneck and I really believed it. Until I tried to use voice to text. <laughs> it has no fucking idea what I'm saying. Like, no idea what I'm saying. Like, not even close. And it's not like I'm saying anything overtly Southern. You know, it's not like I'm like, I reckon we figgin' to go down yonder to the creek because the speaking to the hose pipe is flicked. <laughs> the speaking to the hose pipe is flicked. <laughs> By the way. So I am, I'm the fifth of five kids. Yes, my older sister, she's one of these people, she won't read a newspaper, and she won't watch the news on TV, but she is addicted to the History Channel. <laughs> so if you want her opinion on a current event, you have to wait like 100 years. <laughs> she's gonna be so excited when she finds out we had a black president. <laughs> They took off an episode of my favorite TV show because they said it was a bad influence on kids. They didn't do that when we were little, did they? No. Hell no. no. Y'all, when we were little, after watching Mary Poppins, my sister jumped off the roof of our trailer with an umbrella. <laughs> and nobody said cancel Mary Poppins. They just said, hey, that girl's stupid. <laughs> And she is. <laughs> Last time I went home, my sister starts going on and on about the Orientals. The Orientals. I thought she was being attacked by a rug. <laughs> Finally, I go, do you mean Asians? She goes, well, I say Oriental. I said, well, I say it's 2020. <laughs> She goes, well, my Oriental friends don't mind. 
I said, well, clearly you don't have any. <laughs> she said, well, I don't consider Japanese Asian. <laughs> really? Because I don't consider geography a matter of opinion. <laughs> I have three older brothers. Uh, my oldest brother is a fundamentalist evangelical minister. Or as I like to call him, asshole. <laughs> For short. He's also a military cop. He's every kind of asshole <laughs> you can possibly be. My middle brother's schizophrenic. And, uh, you know, they're much older than me, so he was diagnosed when I was little. So pretty much my whole life, y'all, my brother has been so messed up on psych meds that, like, he can't even carry on a conversation with me. And my daddy said he hung out with him recently, and I was like, oh, what was he like? And my daddy was like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, you know, like, pretty much my whole life, he's been so messed, on, messed up on psych meds, like, he can't even carry on a conversation. And my daddy was like, huh, I've never seen him like that. <laughs> what? Wait, what? My whole life, y'all. Okay, what? All right. Do you mean to tell me that my whole life, my brother has been pretending to be messed up on psych meds because he doesn't want to talk to me? Holy shit, that is brilliant. I am so mad I didn't think of that first. This whole time I could have just been pretending to be too fucked up to talk to those people. The youngest brother passed away a few years ago. Yeah, he died of a drug overdose. And it was really surprising to everyone Especially me, because, like, I always just assumed he'd die of alcohol poisoning. <laughs> My brother had open heart surgery, and then he did cocaine and heroin together. Because drinking himself to death was taking too long. <laughs> they don't call it a speedball for nothing. <laughs> And he was the brother I liked, you know? Like, he was super racist and super sexist, but just a sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> like, you knew you didn't want to stay on the phone with him for too long, because he was going to say something really fucked up. <laughs> but he always had a joint with your name on it. <laughs> and I like that in a person. So I do come from a long line of drug addicts, including me. But my grandmother was the best, okay? My grandmother was on 22 different prescriptions at one time, all of which she had written herself. <laughs> because, because she stole her doctor's prescription pad. Isn't that the best? Yeah, she got arrested. Yeah, my grandmother actually went to jail. I don't know, I guess the pharmacist got suspicious when the prescriptions just started saying downers. <laughs> Something to take the edge off. For a while, when I was a teenager, I stayed with my Southern Baptist grandmama. And I got home really late from a date one night, and she's freaking out. She meets me at the door freaking out. She's like, I just hope you realize that on Judgment Day, the good Lord is going to flash your life up in the sky like a movie picture for the whole world to see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everything you ever do with any boy is going to be flashed up in the sky just like a movie. <laughs> Finally, I was like, oh good, Grandmama, maybe God will roll the credits and I can find out what some of their names were. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I, I had a little Southern mom, you know, and like all Southern moms, she had all these cute little sayings, you know? I think my favorite one was, I'm gonna knock your teeth down your throat. <laughs> or Bobby, you ain't worth a shit. <laughs> so just little colloquialisms. <laughs> that you hear? She used to always go, if I ever had to choose between you and your daddy, I'd choose your daddy. And I'm like, I'm four. <laughs> Is this the thing I need to be worried about? Because I have a lot on my plate right now. And what are the circumstances under which she would ever have to choose between me and my daddy? Like, were people just walking up to her on the street being like, your husband or your kids? <laughs> like, some kind of redneck Sophie's choice. <laughs> I used to watch that movie, Mommy Dearest, and I would think, God, I wish Joan Crawford were my mom. <laughs> At least she warned them about the wire hangers. So I was interviewed on NPR once, and uh, they asked me why people become comedians. And I said, well, obviously, because our mothers don't love us. <laughs> and y'all, my sister told my mama that I said on the radio that she didn't love me. And my mama goes, well, I know Bobby's a comedian, and it's her job to exaggerate things that are a little true. <laughs> girlfriends one night and every one of them said that when they were growing up their mother read their diary my friend was like oh my mother read my diary she found out I wasn't a virgin anymore <laughs> yeah if my mama had read my diary she would have found out that I existed <laughs> lives here? <laughs> I've been thinking about this a lot though, y'all, and I have decided that I want my child to become a comedian. So I've started to neglect her. I have planned a rigorous program of harsh criticism and mixed messages. <laughs> She's gonna be fucking hilarious. I hear a lot of comics talk about how white people don't beat their kids. I wish someone had told my parents <laughs> that white people don't beat their kids because they did not get the memo. And if they had, they would have beat the shit out of it. Because that's how they handled their problems. I also hear comics talking about the sex talk they had growing up. Who had the sex talk? <laughs> yeah, I did not get the sex talk. Y'all, my family's version of the sex talk was my daddy going, don't no man want damaged goods. <laughs> but you know what? It turns out a lot of men <laughs> want damaged goods. I mean, like a lot. <laughs> like a lot of them. <laughs> Can someone please tell my daddy that forwarding me racist emails is not the same thing as keeping in touch? <laughs> right? My daddy goes back and forth between sending me like racist anti-immigrant emails and racist cute kitten pics. But I found out recently, y'all, that my daddy is for gay marriage. Yes, my daddy is for gay marriage. As long as the couple 
is of the same race. Because you gotta draw the line somewhere. He's like, I am racist, but I am not a homophobe, God damn it. My daddy got his DNA test done. Have y'all seen those Ancestry.com commercials? You can find relatives you didn't even know existed. Gee, because the ones I know about are so awesome. <laughs> Has anybody ever been in a family gathering and been like, oh, if only there are more of these assholes? <laughs> if only I could find relatives I didn't even know existed. I just hope they can't find me on Ancestry.com. So my daddy got his DNA test done and he sent me the results, super excited, like he passed. <laughs> and he's part English and Irish and Scottish and Welsh and Russian and German and Scandinavian. I'm like, congratulations, you're 10 kinds of white. <laughs> but y'all, if you take your DNA, you willingly mail it to a corporation you pay them like a hundred bucks to take it. Does anyone really need to tell you you're white? <laughs> Is that not the whitest fucking thing? Here's my DNA, what could possibly go wrong? I have a great money making idea, okay? I'm gonna start a DNA testing service and literally all we're gonna do is tell white liberals that they're 1 16th Native American. <laughs> I'm gonna make a fucking killing. I can tell that joke because I'm a white liberal. Plus I'm 1 16th Cherokee. <laughs> so my daddy is a Trump supporter. Thank you for your thoughts and prayers. <laughs> at this difficult time. Here's the deal, my mama was a Democrat, okay? My mama died, my daddy starts dating all these old women in Georgia, they're all conservative, so now suddenly he's a conservative. So it is true what they say, being a Republican is an STD. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't fuck them, you'll get it. Don't fuck them. Why would you fuck them? <laughs> Y'all, if my mama were alive today and she knew my daddy voted for Trump, she'd shoot him again. <laughs>